Hello everyone, it is I, Mark Major, and I am situated right now here in the uh, Action Figuratorium, as it were, and I know that I've said in the past that I'm going to be actually showing some more action figures um, as a channel named Action Figuratorium. Didn't show that many action figures quite a bit because I'm talking about industry news. So um, let's just take a look at this. What do you guys think of this repainted Abominator or some Roblox trash I got on the cheap? And uh, this is the very special ride of uh, Ghost Rider. So um, there you go. That's some uh, action figures. Now let's get on to the main part of the video and that is we have another Kickstarter that has come out with action figures of the six inch scale and um, list of all-star names is included with who has worked on this. We're going to get into that in a little bit. These are um, figures uh, for a Kickstarter campaign called Galactic Valor. I found out about Galactic Valor before it launched on the uh, Brick Something YouTube channel. It does a show every Sunday night called News. That's an acronym. Just go check it out to see what it stands for. Um, essentially, he goes through and shows off up and coming new toys, things like that. It's a really great show. You guys should check it out if you've got uh, Sundays open. But today, I'm going to be going through their Kickstarter. I'm going to be doing my uh, marketing analysis that I always do of these. We're going to look at objective best practice things that should happen in every Kickstarter in order to get the most money. And then, of course, I'm going to kind of, uh, you know, give a little bit of opinion and review of what I personally feel about kind of the toys and if I think this thing's got the legs to make it. All that sort of subjective stuff is in there as well. So uh, today you're definitely going to want to uh, strap on the leather and hold on tight. So we're going to cut over to um, browser view. Very exciting when we uh, transition over. Wow, look at that. It's just like we went through some kind of Narnia portal. So here we are at the Galactic Valor Action Figures Kickstarter campaign. Uh, the company that is putting this out is called Fox Forge Toys. I have gone to their website, of course. Here it is. You can see they're pumping out their Galactic Valor. Very nice, very smooth, very clean um, logo they've come up with. I looked about their uh, abouts and stories and things like that. And um, I didn't really find out too much about them except for when I went to shop and I found this Stardust action figure. So it would seem that, I don't know if this is something they kickstarted in the past. If so, I missed it. Um, this apparently is some type of action figure line that they have created. Maybe these are individual 3D prints. Maybe these are resin. Maybe they did kickstart these and they have these available. Only $25. Might as well give this a little bit of a plug if nothing out in this else in this video. Um, but this is apparently who's putting on this uh, kickstarter here. So um, we should probably play the video. I'd like to point out that they're looking for $80,000. This is the first day they've opened. They're already at $17,000 or 21% of the way there. It keeps going up. We're going to see at the end of day one how far they get. And that's really going to be, I think, a good indicator of whether or not this thing crosses the finish line, whether or not it funds. But I think what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of uh, watch their their vid and hopefully it'll give us a good idea of what they are selling. So give me a second here.
All right, so um, sounded like movie trailer, you know, like some sort of Avengers music. Um, I always like it when they put some kind of a voiceover in there, although it's not necessarily needed. I always kind of think that that's one more touch you can do. You can bring in some kind of a voice actor or Ethan Van Skyver it. Do it yourself. Go go homemade if that's your uh, that's your plan. Okay, so they're doing space fantasy figures. Um, called Galactic Valor. Here's like what a sort of a stock guy looks like and you can see all the sort of uh, articulation. This is to let you know this is a very detailed, um, you know, action figure. It's not just like some five points of articulation. I think the boxes look really good, look very pro, look like something you'd see. You know, looks as good if not better than some of the Funko stuff. Look at the Funko Legacy Collection. They're literally just white boxes with some black text on it. And um, this looks better than that. Here we get to see what, they, uh, what their figures look like with some other famous figures. Here's kind of the whole line of what they're selling. These five guys. Notice you got the dude with the cape and the giant Gundam blade in the middle. Okay, so then they go through the individual figures they're selling. There's this guy and this dude. And uh, this guy shows up. And then, uh, sure enough, we have this guy shows up. And then finally at your party, you have a space party. You're like, check it out. It's a it, party's in space. There's no day or night. It's just endless party. This guy shows up, right? So you got a full pack of dudes. Okay, let's look at some of the add-ons because we're going to get into the rewards in a bit. They've got a pack of sort of gold weapons. Kind of cool. Sort of look like everything else yet kind of futuristic. There's a comic book for five bucks. The uh, weapons pack is 15 uh, there's a shirt for $20. It's just got the logo on it and something on the back saying I backed it and that kind of thing. And um, some stretch goals. There's an artist proof that if they get enough money, it means you get a generic one that you can paint. Um, there could be a second issue of a comic book. There could be some other figures they're going to unlock, like this guy, a Nexus Enforcer. Uh, these are the guys who come to the party to shut it down. The Nexus Guardians, another dude. Look, his other heads is some sort of military thing. These are cops, okay? Space cops. And by the way, I made a video, a build a team, where I made a team of space cops out of a Lennard action figure. And um, they could have bust these guys. My space cops, my space cops are they're tough. And then this, if they get the $215,000, they're going to unlock this, um, some sort of like... Um, well, it's probably a herbivore, although it has kind of a gorilla body and it's kind of armadillish. Um, I don't know. It's like a cool kind of uh, space monster that maybe someone could ride or fight or ride and fight. And that's kind of it for the product. So let's see how they are selling these. Let's see what they cost. All right. So we're going to get into some areas where I do not understand. And this is the toughest part of the show. Um, it's the part where I see what they're pricing things for and how they're making their groups and I've got to think that it has something to do. Um, it has something to do with Kickstarter. It has to because everybody keeps coming up with really weird stuff that doesn't make any sense. And I think that Kickstarter is to blame for this because I don't think this many people can make this kind of weird of mistakes. Um, but if you just want one action figure, it's thirty dollars, and I think that's a pretty fair price. Uh, I would love to, of course, as always, to see 25. I'm a big believer in the carrot and the stick program where you offer, hey, if you just want one, it's going to be this much. But if you get a bunch of them, they go really cheap. You know, make it 20, 25 if you get four or five of them. And then there's an incentive for people to just grab as many as they can in the bag. You still make a little bit of money. Actually, in some ways, you might make more money. But because action figures require minimum, order quantities from the factory you have to move a lot of them to get a lot of them made to get them cheap enough to make money so i really believe in the incentivize people if they buy a lot and if you make it really lopsided to where it feels like you're being penalized for buying one guy but rewarded for buying many people will buy the many they'll see the math and they'll like Shh, you know they're only going to go up so this is confusing. One guy for 30 or they have a special thing of two guys for 60. Why not just have one guy? And if you want to add another guy for 30, which they have, why not have it? Why is there an actual separate package for two? You don't get anything different for that. Like if you buy one, you get the sticker pack with it. If you buy two, you get the two guys in the sticker pack. It doesn't make sense. Um, same thing with the three. Three guys, it's why don't you just buy one guy and add two guys? Um, and, 
and you're already getting a sticker packet. And what is the sticker packet? They didn't see it in the list of rewards. It's something that's coming after. Are they like printing it at home? Um, and then there's this thing where they bump up to five guys. They're still 30 bucks each. There's no discount. But now they've added a magnet. And I don't see a picture of the magnet. Okay. Then we get to eight guys. Price is the same. They've added magnet. They've now added trading cards. Do not see picture of the trading cards yet. This stuff might might get added in a day or two. People might sort of, hey, what about, the? and then they, you know, they're not quite ready, but they want to launch because it's important to get this thing, this canoe into the water, but they're not showing you some of the stuff that you get, and it's kind of, kind of confusing. All right, 12 guys. Um, at this point, they're still charging you 30 bucks a figure, but they're now throwing in a shirt and charging you $20 for it, which you could always just, once you buy a figure, you can always just buy a shirt for 20 bucks. So now they're force feeding you a shirt on this package. They're actually shopping for you, not giving you discounts though. Very confusing. And I haven't got to the product yet. I'm just going through the pricing. If you feel like I'm being mean or something, uh, put it in the comments that I don't know math or something because I don't. I'm terrible. I have a degree in art history that you can tell that's going to get me nowhere when it comes to this kind of stuff. But the math doesn't make sense to me. Where's the carrot and the stick on this? Same thing with like the 18. Um, now they start dropping in a comic book, right? And there's a limited edition signed poster. Don't see that. Don't know what that is. 770, you get... Um, God, how many figures? 24 figures. And uh, again, no discount. Then there's something called the Galactic Crate where they keep throwing in... Um, now they throw in a 4-inch gold statue, which is, according to what they say, it's just like a 3D printed 4-inch figure. Um, you know, figurine, and then somebody airbrushes it or rattle cans it, or I don't know, maybe they dip it, maybe it's dyed. <laughs> You know, these special 3D printed dye that comes out gold. I don't know. There's not a picture of it. I'm not sure what it is. But they're doing weird things to add value, but they are trying to add value. They are trying to incentivize you. I just don't, I, I'm just, I don't connect with it though. I think they're, they know what they're doing, but they don't know how to quite get from here to there with all their little tchotchkes, of which if you watch my show, I love tchotchkes. I love saying tchotchke and I love the idea of them existing. So all the stuff they have is the right stuff. All, having a four inch statue, it's the right thing to have. Having a limited edition sign poster, the right thing to have. T-shirts, right thing to have. Trading cards, yes. All those things, yes. The way they're including them in the packs and then sentizing, not making sense per se. But this, if their first time or second time doing this, the second time around, they'll realize how much extra burden they took on and what really mattered, what people cared about. Like at the end of the day, guy doesn't get the magnet and he's like, what's this? I didn't even know I was getting this. Like if that's, if people don't even know what they're getting, then it's not an incentive to get this. Move it into something else. But you, they have all the right stuff. And then there's the ultimate crate. And basically I worked this out. You get 40 figures um, at 30 bucks each. So there's no discount for figures if you buy more. Five of the figures, not an additional five, five of them are signed. Um, now, if these were a famous toy company, the signature might mean something. Um, if they go on to become a famous toy company, the signature is definitely going to mean something. But currently where they're at right now, the signature holds no value. May hold future value, may hold a lot of future value. No, no value now for a signed piece. But it's nice that they're doing it. It's the right idea. Um, but then for 700 bucks plus, so you buy 40 figures at full price and you, then you give them $700. They will take a photo of your face and make a custom figure or at least head that you can add for it. So weigh that in. If you think that's worth $700 or not, up to you. Not sure who actually does that right? Because we're going to look into who actually makes the product, that kind of thing. But those are the rewards. That's the breakdown. Okay, so let's go back to the campaign for a bit. Now, if you've watched the show before, you know that I've got these, um, these goofy things that I claim are, uh, are objective, right? It's this. This is a best practice that I came up with by um, examining four successful Kickstarters that happened last year. 
and seeing what it was about them that gave them the biggest payouts, right? What they did, what they had in common, that kind of thing. And the first thing is always the simplest, and this goes for anything, any product line you're out there making. You need to have a cheap thing for everyone to buy. You need to have a deluxe thing for people who want more, willing to spend more. And then you ha need to have a luxury item for the, s it exists for the sake of just being a luxury item. It's something people will pay for because it exists and they have the money. And there's nothing wrong with having those. Those are great. Um, the other thing is that we found out that like, the more characters you have, the more sales you get. Uh, there was a guy who just had one character, one figure, and he finished, he crossed the finish line, but not by much and at the very last minute. And, um, and so successful, but not as successful as people who had many characters. And then put all your marketing on your Kickstarter page. So we'll start with that one because I am seeing these rewards they're throwing in, sticker packs, magnets, trading cards, four inch statue, and they're not giving you a break on the price, so they're incentizing you with these extra tchotchkes in the bag. Great idea, great idea. However, I do not know what they look like. I don't know anything about them. They're listed there, that's good. Need to have it on your Kickstarter page. So I'm gonna ding them for that. I feel like that's an objective thing. Okay, uh, selection, they have five guys, but, but check this out here. Let's let's get this thing off the screen. We're tired of looking at this. Okay, so they have five guys, right? But there's really only one mold. It's that generic body with the sort of cargo pants and the two straps, and everybody's got sort of uh, talon feet, you know, Skeletor feet, and these sort of. Um, armored shin pads and sort of armored things and then everything else is just a redeco repaint uh, a different head right meaning they they make one body some get painted this some get painted this some get painted, and then they make a bunch of heads and they put them on and then a few guys have kind of like a cool sort of overcoat armored jacket kind of thing and they're real sort of, of space fantasy you know they're totally nailing this genre out of the park right there's no question there but really, it's one figure, it's one body, and an assortment of different paint jobs and heads, which is the way a lot of toy lines go, except they have a few different bodies, different molds, and then they swap parts to make them. That is essentially the Masters of the Universe best practice we learned from the 80s, right? Make a lot of different characters by having a lot of different parts that are sort of reusable in some way, and these guys are just limited to the one mold that they can get. And so the most variety they can get out of this character are repaints and a little bit of extra dunnage, we'll call it. You know, one guy's got like a strap thing and another guy's got a cape and, you know, stuff like that. So they're doing a lot with what they got. To, to take this on with one mold, this is, I'm going to say that this is actually a point. This is a pretty smart thing to do for what you got. But is it enough? Is it enough? Can you only get by nowadays with getting enough money to be successful? Sure, you can raise some money. Can you raise enough money to get to the finish line? Maybe. Are you going to go any further? Don't know. I really think it takes um, a bigger ask to get more molds, to get more characters, to make more variety. But they're doing great with what they have and the concept that they have. Um, it does get boring quick though, because as you can see by looking at them, it almost doesn't really matter which guy you get. It's like, do you like the head kind of thing? That's how I feel. And I'm guessing that more people will probably buy the dude in the middle because he's got a weapon and a cape and he, it looks like the most value for your money. Um, it's just the way the eye registers that kind of thing. So. Uh, that's the deal on variety. Now, as far as the, the packaging goes, as far as going back to rewards, um, they don't have a way for you to buy just the comic book or just the shirt or just the other thing. If you buy one figure, then you can get that stuff. I always feel that you really need to have that stuff down there for anybody because you need ways to get every single bit of money you can and to engage as many people as you can. And some people will do things like they'll buy $5 for the comic book, right? And they're technically a, a, a backer. And then when the backer kit survey goes, maybe in a few months or something like that, 
they've had some time to sit on it. Maybe they sold some things. Maybe they have some money. Maybe they're playing this from the get-go. They'll go in and then maybe just maybe add a figure or two. Maybe they're going to add a figure or two, but they didn't want it to close on this day when they didn't have any funds, right, to have this thing charge the bank. So they just sneak in by buying like the $15 weapons pack only, knowing that they're going to buy a figure at the end of the backer kit uh, deadline. So it kicks out. They still get to be a backer. They still get access to those toys, but they don't have to pay anything. And believe it or not, this is a marketing strategy is to have a cheap thing to allow last minute hanger-ons get in there, even though, yes, to handle those low dollar orders, like send out a comic book at the $5 range is going to eat up resources and time and kill you. My friends, life is struggle, okay? What else you going to do? You know, paint the garage? You're not doing anything anyways. You need something to do. And that's just one of the many things in which you can say, yeah, I paid my dues. I hand-packed 20 comics for this. You know, now my kid does, or now I, I pay the neighborhood kid or something. I've made, you know, I've retired and now these people do. That kind of, you need to have a great story yourself if you want to make it. So I don't necessarily see the, the different uh, I don't see the deluxe or the luxury item in this. Everything is a $30 figure. I, and there's honestly, there's no incentive to get all five as far as a price thing goes, right? There's no incentive price-wise to get five. They only just throw in more tchotchkes, which again, I don't know what they look like. They might be, you know, the magnet. What if the magnet like is the size of your car door kind of thing, like door may... Or what if it's a fridge mat? I want to know. I, I think it's worth knowing. So that's the three objective points. Um, these guys are not far behind all the, the, the what you need to make it, um, to make it successful. They're right on the cusp. They're kind of doing it right. They're really, they're just a little bit around the corner on all this stuff. Very, very close. They need to fix and straighten out some of the stuff a little bit, mainly just pricing and carrot and stick. Um, but I like it. Now, let's get into Mark Major Talk's subjective, what he feels and his opinions. And my opinions, a lot of the times people are they're terrible. They're wrong. Nobody wants to hear them. They're, some countries consider my opinions to be bad luck. But let's all laugh at me. Let's all have a good laugh at my expense. Let's be entertained by how dumb I am. Remember, I'm the dumbest guy in the room every single time I go into a room. There's nothing I can do about it. Look at me, I'm terrible. So here's what I think, okay? Um, to me, these look like more of the same of what we've been seeing recently. They don't feel special, unique, or new. And what I mean by that is, the Four Horsemen, which I talk about a lot on this channel, have one of the best lines ever called Mythic Legions. So good that they decided to make a science fiction line called Cosmic Legions. Here is the Cosmic Legions checklist of the figures they've made so far. They're sort of science fiction, space fantasy figures as well. Very well done. Very cool. Another Kickstarter that was, I believe, um, middle last year called Legendary has also these type of science fiction, Motu-inspired uh, space fantasy figures. Also, by the way, the guys who did this um, hired out Four Horsemen to do this, so of course they look like Cosmic Legions, right? And then when we look at Galactic Valor, we find out that they have been, um, they've been sculpted by someone other than Four Horsemen, but they're using 1-6 Shooter, who's a, a great photographer at doing toys. He's been around a long time. But he does everyone's photos at this point. He, everyone just goes to him and uses him. Um, same thing, you know, these companies, we just looked at Zujitsu, also use the Four Horsemen to sculpt their figures. If everyone keeps using the same sculptors, the same sculpting house, if they keep using the same photographer over and over again, and the same customs person to do their capes and, and things like that, the same person to design their deco, we're going to enter a malaise of mediocrity. Things are going to start looking the same and boring, 
And I gotta say, when I first dialed these guys up, I instantly went to, this looks like more of the same, this looks mediocre, and this is boring, and it's by top guys. And so it shouldn't be the fact that it itself is poorly done, like they did a bad job sculpting or they did a bad design or anything. It's just that there's so much of this stuff that's already in the pipeline coming out in the sort of human psyche at this point that it's not different and unusual enough despite being good, right? You can still make a product good, but it doesn't scratch any itch for whatever reason. And I think that that is right now where we're at in this sort of cusping on peak action figure and toy collection times, right? In, uh, in this civilization at least, it feels like um, you're really, really, really gonna have to push the boundaries on whatever it is that you're doing to stick out, even if that means you're gonna be kind of a bit niche and you'll never be able to hit huge numbers because at the end of the day, only so many people can be into an action figure about uh, a guy who flips toys, for example, which is a funny, cool, interesting, different thing, but it's got a ceiling on it. It's not, you know, some of this stuff, yes, Galactic Valor could be very mainstream, but at the same time, it's so broad and looking like everything else, it's tough to see it stick out. And so I'm not sure if this is the kind of thing that's going to get enough money. Also, just like we saw the year before, all these Kickstarters came out the same time and were competing for all the oxygen in the room. Thank you to everybody who made it this far into the uh, video. And as always, stay charged, people.